Welcome back to my channel if you're returning. And if you're new, I'm Depths Unique. I'm a hip hop artist, graffiti artist, beat maker, producer, beatboxer, uh, b boy, the whole nine yards. I'm a true hip hop head. In this episode, uh, we're going to be talking about the nine elements of hip hop. Uh, most people claim there's only four, some claim there's five, but much like uh, KRS One. I like to say that there are nine elements, and uh, we're going to be going on over all nine of these, uh, according to not only KRS One, but I kind of put in a little bit of my own knowledge of hip hop culture, what have you, I've learned over the years. So, um, thanks for watching. Let's get into it. We've got some notes here. We're going to be going over the nine elements. Um, so let's start with number one. Number one, I like to say is graffiti. Graffiti is uh, the written word. The visual, uh, the visual art of hip hop. So with graffiti, you have three main elements. Uh, classically, three main elements. You have the tag, the throw up, and the piece or the masterpiece. There are a few others that I'm going to get into in a second, but those are the three main elements of graffiti. The tag is basically your name and signature. If you don't have a sweet tag, you ain't a graffiti artist. And every artist who hits the streets starts out with the basics. A s single word, sometimes more than word, actually, one word actually, but ca classically it's just one word and it's your signature. So you have, you know, you, you can write it fast and get it up as much as you can. It's all over town, all over the city, all over the suburbs. The, the the rural areas, you know, depending on where you come from, get up as much as you can and learn how to write your tag as best you can. It, it can take years before you perfect your word, but the basic is the tag. It's your signature. The throw up. The throw up, it, it comes in a few forms. It can be block letters or bubble letters. Um, and there's hollows and, and fill-ins. Hollows tend to be just an outline of, of the bubble letter or the straight letter. Uh, sometimes it's even one line. I do a one line throw up a lot. Uh, and fill-ins are basically the the outline with some fill-in. Like if you're using black as the outline, then you use white or red or yellow or whatever color you're using as your secondary. Sometimes throw ups can't even have three co colors if you're getting really intricate with your throw up. You know, do a little accents and stuff like that but typically uh throw ups are one or two colors and then there's the piece or the masterpiece the masterpiece is the mul the ones that are most famous you know you saw the subways back in the 70s and 80s early 80s and what have you used lots of colors spray cans of multitude of colors color waves from using the whole spectrum the whole color uh color wheel using all these and uh, then there's the wild style. Wild style is like very intricate. Uh, takes a lot of time to create. Um, I'm not much of a piecer. I piece in my time, but I'm more of a bomber. So uh, I stick with the throw ups and the, and the tags. But I do like to piece occasionally when I have the opportunity. But So those are your three main elements of graffiti. And then we're going to move on to a couple other... Uh, elements of graffiti there's the characters <coughs> excuse me uh characters like uh um cheech wizard was very common on the subwaves back in the 70s and 80s you know and then you can create your own characters or rehash you know bugs bunny or wily e. coyote you know some of these uh classic cartoons um i don't personally do cartoons i have these little characters I call nomies. Um, each one is individually drawn and not one is ever the same. I tend to use it black and white um, just because I come from the bombing era where we only use black and white or very limited color palette. So, uh, But I do occasionally will color them in or I'll give my stickers with, the, with my characters on them to friends and they'll color them in. It's just part of what I do. So and then uh, there's some, some other elements that have come up since the the subway era and the tagging, the New York tagging era, uh, such as stencils like you see with Banksy. 
or uh, wheat paste. If you don't know what wheat paste is, it's like a glue that you apply to like with posters and stuff. You saw it a lot when people were advertising street street marketing and advertising. They would wheat paste uh, the advertisement up. Uh, artists like Obey or also known as Shepherd, Shepherd Fairy did a lot of that. Um, and then there's stickers or slaps. We call them slaps because you slap them up. But stickers are a good way to get your name up. Uh, you, it's really quick. You just you can create them in your room or at home and walk out with a pocket full of them and just hit the streets and put them up. Uh, etching. Etching is another common. Nowadays, it's a common uh, form of graffiti. It's usually scribing your name or tag or what have you into glass or some other like a hard plastic hard clear plastic or even like on tile and you you, you take a very uh, abrasive um, piece of metal or you can even use the tip of a drill bit or what have you and you etch your name into the glass or tile or what have you so that's another form that's been common over the last several years. And I'm going to throw in something that's not very common, uh, not really known as graffiti, more of a street art or a do-it-yourself DIY technique. It's called yarn bombing. I've seen it a lot over the years, in more in recent years, where uh, people who like to knit will actually knit like poles or stop signs or what have you. I think it's really interesting. I'm not a knitter myself. I've never done it myself, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. So uh, yeah, that's the that's the number one element, or not the number one, but the first element. And uh, if you're interested in learning some of the history, there's a couple of artists I like to throw out there: Don D. White, uh, Lee, Seen, S E E N. They were some pioneers during the subway era in New York. Um, and look them up. There's plenty of information about them. You can get some books on them or what have you, but look them up. And then the more modern artists like Banksy I mentioned earlier. Banksy, if you don't know who Banksy is, you need to know him. He's like the epitome of street art these days. His art sells for millions and millions of dollars and people collect it. All the uh, snooty people with all the money are collecting his stuff. And Yeah, there's a good movie out, uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop, where... <laughs> I got the I got the comedy in it, but a lot of people didn't. They didn't quite understand it. If you're a graffiti artist and you haven't seen that, watch it. You'll get a good laugh at the end. You know, sellouts or what have you. And then there's Cause. Uh, Cause was a, I believe he started as a cartoon artist, but also hit the streets for years, and now he's a toy designer and a sculptor, and he's been featured in the MoMA and. He's amazing. He's got his character. Yeah, I I remember I saw him in the thanks one of his characters in the Thanksgiving parade, and it was followed by, believe it or not, the New York Police Department. So his uh, balloon was going down the street, and followed by that was the New York Police Department. I just thought that was ironic. Uh, shout out to Cause. That <laughs> made me smile. And then Shepard Fairy or Obey, I, I mentioned earlier, he's he's not only a, a, a street artist, but he's also a muralist and a clothing designer, and among other things, he's ha he has a few. I think he has a doc uh, a movie about him, some documentaries, what have you. Look him up, good stuff. So number two, break dancing. Break dancing is the hip-hop form of dance um, and there's two things I like to point out I, I don't break dance anymore I did in my youth and it was fun but I just my body can't handle it anymore especially after my hip surgery but I had fun in my youth doing it so there's up rocking up rocking is usually when you're well it's when you're on your two feet up up rocking is basically you're off the floor and down rocking is when you're actually on the floor doing your spins or your your feet work, what have you. And uh, breakdancing is known for their battles. So crews would form and they would battle each other and just for sport. And they would 
dance they'd have dance offs and crowds would gather and it was epic back then anyways uh and a, a good artist to look up uh if you want to see some really good footwork and some really good break dancing is a guy named crazy legs i've mentioned him in another video but look up crazy legs <clears throat> excuse me so number three the mc or the uh, master of ceremonies also in recent years known as the microphone controller so uh, the microphone controller, the master of ceremonies, the MC, also can be considered a rapper. Um, I like to say all MCs are rappers, but not all rappers are MCs. And MCs tend to be the more lyrical, the more word play artists and what have you. And a lot of them um, specialize in freestyling and written rhymes. Some only focus on freestyling. Some only focus on written rhymes. You know, um, I don't feel I don't freestyle much, but I write them like such. That's something I like to say because I don't really freestyle much anymore. Once I picked up the pen, I figured I I found out that I could get more intricate. Go back and edit and edit and edit. And I like to be really intricate with my rhymes. Not saying that you should. If you like to freestyle and you get good at it, you can get much respect. Um, so uh, East Coast, West Coast, Down South, and Midwest is like a, how I uh, like to define the different styles of emceeing or rapping. Um, there are other areas, you know, you can go overseas and there's whole new generations of foreign kids rapping and even the even the older cats you know they rap too but so east coast some artists you want to look up rock him big l rest in peace biggie notorious big also known as B, uh big uh look them up uh while i'm thinking of it i like to share a lot of these books that i read sweat the technique by rock him excellent book i should reread it um Relevation, revelations of creativity from the lyrical genius. He really is one of the, the greatest of all time. Um, Rakim the God. Yeah, look that up, that book up, and get your hands on it. It's a fabulous read if you want to really get good at wordplay and study one of the greats. West Coast, I'm just going to throw out some more common ones uh tupac of course everyone knows tupac even my dad rocks tupac occasionally and he's an old uh hippie mac dre mac dre is like the legend in my community he's just over a couple cities over and that's where he grew up this little city called vallejo mac dre lyrical genius uh and then ice cube is another one down from la i'm just kind of mixing these up uh, kind of by West Coast uh, standards, Ice Cube. He's a legend down in L.A. And there's many, many more. I'm just mentioning a few. If you don't know these names, you should look them up. You need to study these people because you'll learn a lot if you're trying to get into this hip-hop community and what have you. So down south, UGK, the Underground Kings. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, anyway, um... Outcast, 8 Ball, and MJG. Just a few I'm throwing out there. Listen to them growing up. Love their styles. Uh, Midwest. Midwest rappers, MCs. Uh, Atmosphere. If you don't know Atmosphere, they're, they're a little uh, modern compared to some of these other artists I've been mentioning. Uh, good stuff. Him and uh, uh, Slug and Ant. Just a duo. Um out of uh minneapolis um yeah good stuff uh bone thugs and harmony classics if you don't know them look them up uh i've always respected them because they're literally thugs in harmony they harmonize together they rap with harmony it's almost like singing while rapping i love it and then twista <laughs> try and keep up with his lyrics if you can give up with his lyrics, you're on a whole nother level, brother. All right, number four, the DJ or DJs. DJs 
aren't just limited to hip hop, but the hip hop DJ revolutionized sp specifically uh, DJ Cool Herc, who's the father of hip hop. I mentioned that in a previous video. I think I'll try and leave a link to that if you want to know the history of that. Uh, and Grand, the the uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, who's the inventor of the scratch, uh, or he's credited with it. And uh, scratching is something I have never mastered, but I mess around with it on my beats occasionally. Uh, and then you've got the DJ producer who not only DJs but also makes the beats like DJ Premier who inspired me to get my first MPC 60 because back then I didn't know the difference between a keyboard and a MPC and when I read that he used an MPC, MPC 60 I had to get my hands on a copy or on a piece of hardware I still have it to this day I don't rock it anymore it's too obsolete for me but yeah and then DJ Shadow, another MPC 60. I'm just throwing him. He's locally, he's I think he's out of Davis or Sacramento area, and I'm down here in the in the North Bay. Uh, but DJ Shadow revolutionized just the beats where there was no real uh, MC on it, and uh, his uh, his his album uh, and introducing E N D introducing uh, changed my life. I used to uh, rock it with my friends in the car. We'd be driving around, 16 years old, just rocking out on DJ Shadow. So DJ Shadow, look him up. All right, number five, probably the most overlooked element, never made the top four, um, is beatboxing. Uh, beatboxing is noises with your mouth. Um, I uh, want to get my hands on a copy of a or a, a hardware piece of gear called the Boss RC505 Loop Station. I've been beatboxing with, you know, we'd be around the the lunch table and I'd beatbox and my homies would rhyme to my beats and we'd kind of just cipher around. And, um, so, you know, mess around with your mouth. Bank sounds. Can't hurt, you know. Rozell made a career of it. If you don't know who Rozell is, look him up. Fabulous stuff. So uh, yeah, you know, just a kick and a snare. You just you do the kick with your lips, and the snare with your tongue. And you got a hip hop beat. So yeah, beatboxing number five. Number six, street fashion. Now we're going to get into some other elements that are not classically considered hip-hop elements, but I have to agree with KRS-One. They are elements. As you can see, I got one of my Lexicon Creative uh, t-shirts on. It was a company I started about 10 years ago. Didn't make a lot of money, but uh, it's, it taught me a lot about design and fashion creation and what have you, so... Get yourself a copy of uh, Illustrator or Photoshop and start knocking out some t-shirts or learning how to print them. In a future video, I'm going to show you how I print up my t-shirts uh, for my uh, artist brand and also for clients or what have you. Uh, I do a little bit of uh, work um, with clients, so uh, I'll show you how I uh, come up with my concepts from beginning from paper all the way until printing. Uh, so stay tuned for that. It's in in a future video. Anyway, so fas street fashion. Um, while I'm thinking of it, if you don't know who, my name's Dan. My real name's Dan, um, Daniel. And uh, I was always fashion forward when I was younger. My homies used to call me Dapper Dan. The real Dapper Dan is way dapper than me. But... Uh, Dapper Dan is a guy from Harlem who used to make, uh, you know, like I said, Rock Him. He made a lot of stuff for him and Eric B for their cover. Uh, Eric B is president. He did a lot of uh, custom stuff. He'd take Gucci uh, or some of the more famous designers' claw, uh, fabric and he would make them sort of hip hop style and he revolutionized fashion. 
Um, some other things to think about. <clears throat> you know, you got Adidas, Puma, Nike, Reebok. Um, some fashion companies who've made uh, some money off the uh, hip-hop culture, and we've all adopted it as some of our favorite companies as well. Lee Jeans. Uh, if you grew up in the 80s, you had Lee's. Starter jackets. Uh, airbrush. I used to airbrush my own t-shirts years ago. I don't really do that anymore now. I'm more into the to the printing. Um, but airbrushing is classic hip-hop style, you know. Poison written on your butt. The, the girls, you know. Or... Uh, you know, something, your tag written on a jacket, on the back of a jacket. It was classic. You know, and a lot of custom stuff is hip-hop. If you do, you know, custom sneakers, custom hats, custom shirts, custom custom everything. If you have custom, then you're unique. You're one of a kind. Tattoos have been huge lately. Uh, I like to say that Tupac was probably one of the first rappers that I noticed who had significant tattoos and kind of revolutionized the tattoo in the hip-hop. I'm not really sure what the history of tattoos in hip-hop is. I don't personally have any tattoos, but I've always respected the art. I've designed a few tattoos for friends and what have you, and um, I've always respected the, the tattoo as an art form, but I'm not really into uh, tatting my body, because if I tatted, I'd want to get a new tattoo every day and change it you know i like to accessorize so but not not down in tattoos i love them uh, and then jewelry you know you see a rapper with a big chain these days it's nothing new the dookie rope uh the dookie rope was classic gold you know thick gold chains run the emc uh the four finger ring can't forget that if you haven't seen the movie uh do the right thing the Spike Lee joint, uh, Radio Rahim, or is it Rock Radio Rahim, with the hate and the love, uh, four finger rings, classic with the boop, uh, boom box. Yeah, look that up. Do the right thing. Spike Lee uh, was the director. He also starred in it. Great movie. Learn a lot. Number seven, slang or uh, wordplay. Um, hip hop's known for inventing words. I mean, I remember when Lil Wayne came out with the song "Bling Bling," and then it made the Oxford Dictionary the year a year or two later. Excuse me. Um, it just shows you that creativity exists in hip hop, and if the Oxford Dictionary will accept our creativity, then what a better authority! Um, there's a good good song by Big, Big L. I mentioned Big L earlier, but Big L had a song had a song called Ebonics, and uh, it's classic if you want to learn some of the lingo. If you're not familiar with hip hop lingo from past and uh, current, uh, it's called Ebonics by Big L. Look into it. And then out out here in the Bay, we got E40, um, E40, Big Earl. Uh, he does a lot of wordplay, makes up his own words and what have you. Uh, you underdig? Uh, all right, number eight. Number eight, street knowledge. So uh, I grew up in the suburbs. Not a lot of crime. I mean, we, we had a lot of crime in the cities around, surrounding us, but we didn't have a lot of crime. You know, we had petty crime like graffiti or drug dealing, but... Not not too many murders or what have you, or pimping and hoeing and you know stuff like that. But you t I from a young age I used to walk around the tenderloin going, oh well, it's a different type of lifestyle. So I was introduced to a little bit of street knowledge since I was a little kid because I was surrounded by it in the big cities around you know Oakland. You know I've I'm just as happy to walk down 14th street in oakland um as i am the champs Elysees in paris because i i it doesn't scare me 
I respect everybody. And if you respect everybody and you, you can look at it through without rose colored glasses, if you can take your glasses off and see the see the world as it is, see the streets as well as the academia and the high you know, from Ritz all the way down to the crackhead who sleeps on the street, that's street knowledge. If you if you know the difference between a pimp, a player, a hustler, they're no different on the street than they are on Wall Street. You know, there's the same crimes exist on um in the tenderloin that they do on Wall Street. Um, if you've lived a sheltered life, if you spent your life in a rural area and you've never seen that, I suggest taking the trip and and experiencing it because this is the world we live in. And if you don't know, if you just see it on TV and see it in fiction then you don't get to see the world as it exists. There are people who will stab you in the back, whether you are rich, poor, middle class. And there will be people who will hug you, whether you are rich, poor, or middle class. So street knowledge is not just about knowledge of the streets. It's also about knowledge of the world. So, uh, you know... And if you get a chance, go to some of these third world countries where they have nothing. I mean, that's real street knowledge where they can't even afford to put beans in their pot. If you can experience that, then your heart will grow for these people. And it may, might change you and may, maybe even change the way you want to live your life. You might not be concerned about getting the, the Prada purse when when Maria can't even feed her children. I mean, that's real street knowledge. Nothing with Pro nothing against Prada. If I had the money, I'd probably buy my mom a Prada if she wanted it. Um, but then again, you know, what's wrong with a little $12 wallet? It's the same product. It just doesn't have Prada. Enough about that. I'm not going to lecture on material items, I, I'm not going there. Anyways, let's get back to this. And number nine, number nine is street entrepreneurialism or street hustling. Um, basic premise behind uh, buying and selling is you buy low, sell high. So uh, when I was in elementary school, I used to hustle a little bit because my parents didn't really hand out much money to me. I had to work for my stuff. You know, I grew up in a relatively uh, nice neighborhood and good parents, but they didn't believe in an allowance, so I had to work for my stuff. So I started selling candy and baseball cards and playing cards, pogs. If you don't know what pogs are, uh, they were these little discs with something printed on them. And you, anyways, I'm an old school kid, so yeah, I used to sell those and. Then in high school, when I started getting into hip-hop, uh, I'd print up my own t-shirts and uh, my own CDs and tapes, cassette tapes, and I would sell those to all my friends. As a DJ, I'd make mixes and give them to my girlfriends for, you know, and they would pass, they would make copies and sell them themselves so they could make money too and what have you. But, uh, and then uh, also I used to, because I was a graffiti artist and a lot of people dug my work, my letters and stuff, I would, um, I would, write their write girls or some of my homies names and they would pay me money for the time I put into it and, you know I'd spend what three hours and make 10 bucks it's not not the greatest amount of money but you know you got to make your money somehow and when you don't when you're young and you don't have opportunity you find a way to make money the best way you can so I made a lot of money doing that when I was real young I was really into magic tricks and clowning and um, balloon animals and stuff and my aunt and her friends would hire me to do and friends of friends would hire me to do parties and I'd go and do magic tricks for the party and I'd make you know one one time I made $700 for a five hour gig at 
I think I was 12 years old. It was the most money I made it up until that point. So, you know, if you got a skill, I used to DJ parties, um, cut grass, clean out gutters, hustle. You know, if you if you don't want to get a, a, a retail job or a restaurant job, find a way to make some money, you know. I know tapes and CDs don't sell much anymore these days, but Bandcamp, you can make some money doing that still. So look up Bandcamp. Um, I'm old school, so we used to just walk around. Hey, man, you like hip-hop? Yeah, I got this album. You want to check it out? Five bucks. Sell it. You know, it cost me, what, 50 cents to make. 450 you sold enough of those in an hour. Make more than you could at Domino's. Speaking of Domino's, I... Used to deliver pizzas, you know, hustle your way around. That's that's street entrepreneurialism, you know. Cut grass, drive for Uber, deliver, to, you know, or get on eBay and start selling some used stuff, you know. I got tons of stuff that I could sell, you know, these old records and stuff. I could probably sell, but, you know, I don't know. I might sell it, sell it, you know, sell it one day, but I might sample it too, so who knows? I can't really get rid of this stuff yet. Um, I got a lot of collectibles. You know, find collectibles. Speaking of collectibles, collectibles sell a lot. You know, remember the Beanie Baby era? If you're young, if you're older like me, or you know, uh, Pokemon, baseball cards. A lot of that stuff sells really good. Hustle, hustle. So that's uh, yeah. I think that's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, one last thing. Uh, I mentioned this before, but this this uh, this DVD or this film now you can find it online. I'm sure. Uh, Star Wars, it's my Bible. Um, it talks about the history of New York subway riding and break dancing. I mentioned those two elements, but. If you want to learn about this stuff, and that's my whole purpose of starting this channel, is to teach what I have studied since I was, before I was a teenager. You know, I wrote on trash cans on my paper route and uh, found hip hop because I was in love with poetry and it was just another form of poetry for me. And then I started making beats and doing shows with some friends and just kind of evolved over the years, DJing and starting a t-shirt company and doing graphic design and studying all these uh, different um, humanities in, in, in college and high school. And after that, I you know, worked uh, odd jobs as a graphic designer, freelancing for t-shirt companies and music artists and what have you so um if you want to make a career of hip-hop there are so many avenues to go down and that's why i'm creating these uh these videos is because you're not just limited to like being a rapper or a dj or a graffiti artist in my opinion if you're driving uber and freestyling while while you're practicing your way to become a great freestyler, that's a hip hop job in my opinion. Anyways, enough about that. Uh, thanks for watching the video. It's getting a little long. Um, I'm gonna cut this one out. Check out my new video or my new album, The Five Leaf Clover, uh, out August 31st, 2022, on all the streaming platforms. Um, Leave a comment, subscribe, like if you like the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed what we had to talk about this lecture. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to get more into this hip-hop game. Thanks for watching. Depths Unique signing out. Go boom bap, go eat a shroom cap I used to do that, but I don't anymore Cause this points that I score are for the joints that are sore 
Cause I muscled the flow, hustle for show Bust in the door, and cuss out a whore Fuck your abhor, and you suck more Than the vacuum, your accusations Lack conversations, your whack understatement No wonder you're hated, you're under creative And I do this daily, you should pay me But my money is tall, and you're bummy and small Crummy and my tummy is hungry and all Sunny, I run circles around Wearing tie-dye, the live guy in purple and brown I'm just a strange cat that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall Yelling, turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up and bang back I'm just a strange cat that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall Yelling, turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up and bang back the vulture flies as I multiply And sulking cries with the bulk of highs and lows So it goes, I've got broken bones As my smoking glows Okie doke, I wrote this broke But I'm not about to overdose So I'm frozen, I choke, go underwater To get the hungry otter I wonder daughter, if I ever have the hunger I ought to slaughter And leave the carnage Scrub the varnish And rub the tarnish I loved her regardless, but she loved me not So I rub my thoughts, that I'm above the gods Shove the blood clots, and snub out the flame My dub's about to blame, an ugly dame With gorgeous eyes, she gets me higher Than snorting lines I'm just a strange cat, that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall, yelling turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up, and bang back I'm just a strange cat that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall Yelling turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up and bang back I dance with the devil, drink with the angels My stance has levels, thinking with different angles My ink stains bro, and I leak my tears I've done it for days, weeks and years I'm not thinking clear, so I drink a beer And end up in the sink, I'm weird the piano keys, handle these channels I feed, damn it fee, I have to dismantle the panel that grieves over me, sober D is known to be a pain in the ass, I drain the flash flood, smoke is poured into my ash cup, that's what's up, cash and bucks for a cabin such, so I can take her home and crash a nut on her ass and butt. I'm just a strange cat that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall Yelling turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up and bang back I'm just a strange cat that busts arrange raps Neighbors begging on the wall Yelling turn off that Wu-Tang crap So I turn it up and bang back